Okay, when I first started to learn how to TIG weld, I wish I knew about these tips sooner. Look at this stuff here. These are just normal aluminum practice coupons. But do you know what I see when I look at these? Money. Now, why did I just pour a beer? Hang on a second. Watch what happens here. We've got a little problem with rats in the shop here right now. So watch what happens when I leave this sitting out for a little bit. You're gonna be blown away. Now, these aluminum practice coupons, they're basically like dollar bills to me. They were never free for me to use. While I could just get started practicing on scrap material back when I was learning, when it came to learning actual proper joints, I wasted so much of this practice material. I wasted money, I wasted my time, and especially now that I have my own shop here with rats, I might add, I have to pay for everything myself. Welding on practice coupons is literally like burning up dollar bills. Don't even get me started on argon gas. Not to mention everybody's time. You want to make the most out of your practice time when you are practicing. Now, do you want to know why someone like myself or other people waste so much time and practice materials when they are learning? Simply because they do not have proper direction or goals. Now, I know this sounds a little bit cheesy and I'm not trying to be the Tony Robbins of welding here, but when you make the decision that you want to learn to TIG welding, it is really important that you decide on a direction that you want to head with it. This is gonna determine what we practice from here on out. For myself, I wanted to get really good at aluminum TIG welding production badly. There was a ton of really incredible products being done at the shop that I was working at, and it was my goal to be one of the top welders in the shop. Fast forward like 15, 20 years, I was the welding supervisor at the shop, but one of the head trainers of all the TIG welding that was going on, as well as the welding QA inspector in the shop. So I did accomplish my goals, which was great. But one thing that would have helped me shortcut this by a lot was to learn some proper fundamentals on plate material like I talked about when I was first learning. Right away, somebody basically showed me how to turn the machine on. And that's about honestly the only direction I got when I was first learning how to TIG weld. You could cut to me 10 minutes later trying to learn outside corner joints, fillet joints, all the fun looking stuff that I saw other people doing. And basically just making a mess of everything and wrecking stuff. Now, there is a blueprint that I teach my students to follow when they are learning to weld. And we get going with really basic fundamentals working on flat plate. And it's actually a lot simpler than you might think. We get going with several exercises before we even start using the filler material. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use these exercises to learn proper torch manipulation with the introductory stuff that we work on in the blueprint. And for the record, you can also go onto my website and try some of these classes out for free. I will show you some of these exercises. And then as you get further into the exercises that I teach somebody, they're gonna gradually start to get into more intricate joints that way. It seems really simple, but it's actually gonna teach you a ton of fundamental stuff that actually can go on and be applied later down the road with more intricate production welding, which I ended up using. For example, a lot of people are actually more interested in working on automotive work later down the road. I've had a lot of students go through my program and go on to working on stuff like this here. It's pretty amazing to see the transformation that happened here. Again, most of these students had little to no experience with TIG welding at all before. Now, when we started working on our goals for stuff like this, the students identified that they would like to head towards working on automotive stuff like what we were looking at there. Obviously, in which case they would end up working with more tube, pipe, stuff like that. So we started to structure the blueprint of what we were learning in this direction. We did get started with some of the plate joint exercises like I mentioned, but we put more emphasis on the butt joint exercise. This is a big pivot in the program. I'm gonna use the Everlast Typhoon 230 here. This machine is an incredible bang for your buck, and this is capable of some really heavy duty welding. Let's go. This is one of the most underrated exercises that actually seems pretty simple and typically where some people start with learning how to TIG weld. But when we learn the proper things that we need to with something like the butt joint, they're gonna be able to transfer these over to working on pipe joints and get much more success way quicker. And then at that point, we are then gonna move on to working on stuff like pipe joints, coped pipe, and all kinds of other intricate work from that point on. Identifying where you want to end up with your TIG welding goals is something that I would recommend doing and taking some time to focus on before you start putting in the hours to practice. I genuinely wish that I learned this before getting going. It would have saved me a ton of practice material, both with aluminum and stainless steel. 
This next one is absolutely one of the biggest regrets that I have when I was learning to TIG weld. This one was massive. Simply because at this time, now this opportunity has completely passed me by and there is no way to get this one back. And this is going to be documenting your progress as you are learning. How many of you out there watching right now are welding shy? What I mean is do you not want to share any of your work either in person or by photographs until it's absolutely perfect? I was the same. I wanted everything to be just a little bit better and then I could start sharing it with people and taking pictures of it as I was progressing. And then at that point, maybe then I would take some photographs and share them with other people. But this is honestly and genuinely one major thing that I missed out a really important opportunity of taking part in. At this point, I have no way of looking back and seeing actually how far I have come with my work or what I've accomplished with the decades of welding in my career of TIG welding professionally. I only ever took pictures of the good stuff. Unfortunately, I completely skipped over a lot of my early years with TIG welding as if they never even happened. Good or bad, I can't remember any of it. So like I said, after over 20 years of TIG welding, I have no way of looking back at kind of the memories of where I came from as I was learning my first kind of projects and welding joints as a beginner. One thing that I do in my actual programs on my website is I actually incorporate as like these checkpoints where you stop and actually take photos of your work. This starts with the earliest exercises in the program where people literally hardly have any idea what they know what they're doing. No matter how somebody did with it, I stress the importance of taking a full stop up and then actually grabbing some photos of what they accomplished again good or bad i stress the importance of uh checking in and actually like kind of creating a memory of where we are at that current time in the program and again even if you aren't actually super proud of what you did you're going to be super grateful that you took this opportunity later down the line you're going to be able to look back on this in the future and you're going to be amazed at how far you've come. Trust me. Don't be camera shy. Document your work. Like I said, this is going to be something that you're going to look back on and hopefully smile with good memories and see how far you've come in the future. Now, here's something that a lot of people unfortunately fall into a bit of a trap with without realizing it. When people start to get quite good at TIG welding and get comfortable in their position of what they're doing, the unfortunate thing that happens to a lot of people is they start to become complacent. Complacency or like not feeling the need to like learn more about what you're doing or push harder with practice it can definitely be something that can come back and bite you in the ass later. For myself, honestly, this started to happen to me around the 10 year mark of my career and it like actually kind of almost made me quit if I'm being honest. I started to fall out of love with TIG welding like really badly. I was kind of getting bored with the repetitive job that I was doing. I genuinely and honestly, I'm kind of embarrassed to even like say this, but I kind of felt like I had learned everything that there was to learn with what I was doing about TIG welding. Now, you know, obviously nowadays with what I do here, there is no way that I can admit that that's true. Um, still to this day, I'm finding new ways to approach this as if I'm new at what I'm doing and still learning. But a lot of people have found that they get further into their career with TIG welding or welding in general, and they end up getting a little bit bored, a little bit complacent, and they unfortunately end up quitting. So this is something that I'm talking about because I want you to be aware of it and keep a close eye out and make sure that this doesn't happen to you. Looking back on it now, I do see that this was an indication for myself, kind of like a warning in my head. Something that was kind of like telling me, I guess obviously I was in a bit of an autopilot mode. And for somebody like me, who's like kind of like a really, well, no, really a, a very creative type minded person. This was my mind's way of telling me that I needed to move on and start learning some new things. After realizing this, I ended up going back to school at this point. I worked really hard to go for a bunch of certifications and other types of welding processes as well. I now hold tickets for welding processes that I 100% will never use in my life, but it just kind of scratched the itch and took me further into learning in the trade. If you are further into the journey with TIG welding, I would encourage you to keep your eyes peeled for this kind of feeling with yourself. Find ways that you can make welding fun again. If you start to notice yourself getting a bit bored or a bit complacent, look for ways to learn new things and push yourself as a welder or a worker in general. Keep things fun, always be learning. It's almost gone. Now this is actually something that I'm really happy that I figured out pretty early with TIG welding. But if I had not have gone down this route, I could definitely see myself regretting missing out on this opportunity in a massive way. And this opportunity would be to teach people and mentor younger welders. A lot of people in the trade tend to guard knowledge. They're kind of gatekeepers for stuff that will help other people level up. 
And in some cases, I have talked about this before, but some people will even guard or hoard knowledge out of some kind of self-protection thing to prevent other people from getting better than they are. I have seen this a lot of the time with people getting a little bit shaken by like younger hotshots who start at the uh, shop and show some really good promise. Holding back information from people like this who show really good promise and motivation from the trade, I think this is like one of the worst qualities that somebody can have with welding. And honestly, if this is you watching right now, fuck you. Honestly, I want you to think very deeply on this one. Passing on knowledge is something that's gonna grow the trade of welding, which is really important for me. I love welding so much that I wanna pass on as much as I can to grow and keep the trade of welding growing over the years to come. I give away free knowledge all the time. I have free classes, free workbooks and stuff on my website. You can check them out at any time. I write articles on my website all the time. I send emails to my followers like multiple times a week. Anything that I can do to keep people excited and continue growing the trade of welding, whether it's for professional use or just fun. At one point, I actually stepped back into a role where I was teaching part-time at a college here in Victoria where I live. And working with young welders who were just getting started with their journey was one of the most rewarding things that I ever did with the trade. I also then moved into a training position at my job where I was teaching people obviously TIG welding, but other processes as well. And I actually at one point started working with these people as more of like a mentor figure in the shop, helping them out a little bit, trying to help them figure out what their goals were and what direction they should be heading in the career. I would encourage you, even if you have a really short amount of experience with the trade so far, there's always somebody out there who could use some encouragement and some direction, pass on whatever you can. Even if you've only been doing it for like a year or even less than that, like a matter of months, there is something that you can pass on to somebody. I guarantee it. Seriously, sharing knowledge not only is going to help to bring somebody else up, but it actually, interestingly enough, does the opposite to what a lot of people think it does. It's not going to cause others to get so good that they put you out of a job. That's stupid to think about. Well, it might put you out of a job if you have a really shitty attitude and think that about other people. I think that you're going to find that once you start teaching other people intricate details about welding, you're going to start start to see that the things that you are teaching, you are gonna get better at yourself. It's kind of a weird magic thing that just happens. And this is something that I found to be very true for myself. Don't hoard knowledge. Seriously, pass it on. Help grow the trade and play the part in the next generation of welders. I can teach you how to weld and how to reach your goals with it. I have tons of programs and classes on my website. There's free workbooks, all kinds of stuff. I got articles you can read, sign up for my emails. I'm gonna do everything I can to support you as you go through your journey with TIG welding. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James, Bill and Chill. We will talk soon, peace.